the men were on the military test place didn't like at first that a, that a, that a girl were flying there because it was a man's job at this time. But when they saw that I silently in one corner where I thought nobody would see me made, every day from very great height, my vertical dive with bombers and stukas and so on, to test air brakes from all different military types. On landing her stuka at Rechlin after one such test flight, she was told by Karl Franke, the chief test pilot, that he was going to Bremen to test fly Germany's first helicopter, designed by Professor Fokker. And he asked me if I would like to bring him there with my most beloved bomber. This was the Dornier Do 17. When we arrived at Bremen, Professor Fokker received us and was very astonished I was at this time already with 24 years a flight captain. Um, he said, oh, it's wonderful that Hanno Reich also comes to test fly the helicopter. And you see the helicopter, this first helicopter, seemed in the whole world to be a miracle. So I looked to Frank and he only twinkled with his eyes. So I thought, thank you, thank you. I asked to make a circle and I put the plane in the middle I could look to see the wheel. Now, when giving gasoline, I saw when the stick wasn't just in the middle, the wheel went forward. And when, when I went the stick a little bit backwards, the wheel went backwards. So when I found, now the wheel is standing, I gave gasoline, with the gasoline, it went up. I went down again. Within three minutes, I had it. The FA-61 was undoubtedly the world's first practical helicopter. But at that time, there remained the problem of how to present this achievement to a skeptical world. You see, when the newspapers in the whole world wrote about this first miraculous uh, uh, helicopter, uh, we had already so many enemies that they didn't believe it. And if Germany would have invited them, they wouldn't have come. So very clever, General Udet thought, we will, in, we will without inviting them have them all. The occasion was the Berlin International Motor Show, an annual display of German technological skill, which naturally attracted the world's press. And this time, 1938, he thought, we will show the helicopter. And Hanna had to demonstrate this. After this brief rehearsal, Hanna Reich, for the two week duration of the show, nightly performed the hazardous flight inside the Deutschlandshalle, where the smallest fault or error of judgment could have ended in disaster. With the primitive controls then available, such an accident could well have occurred but all went well and it was so clever of General Udet because due to this, it remained an historical fact that Professor Fock's helicopter was really the very first in the history of mankind, yes? But the history of mankind was about to record the outbreak of the Second World War. Hermann Goering reviews men of his Luftwaffe in 1939, by far the most powerful air force in the world, and which was to spearhead the Blitzkrieg, Lightning War, which used air power and armor to crush Poland, the Low Countries, and France in a matter of weeks. In achieving this, many new military concepts were employed, parachute and airborne troops, and perhaps the most innovative of all, the brilliant first use of glider-borne assault troops to capture a vital Belgian fort in 1940. Following the success of the small 10-man glider, a larger machine was produced and test flown by Hanna Reich. This glider, the Goethe 242, could carry 21 fully armed men or be used on supply missions. It was by Allied standards a large glider, but it was soon to be dwarfed. Willy Messerschmitt, the head of the company bearing his name, had been ordered to design and produce a glider capable of carrying a tank or no fewer than 200 fully armed men. 
two hundred of these enormous gliders were to be immediately constructed for operation sea lion the nineteen forty invasion of britain